Welcome to the Bringing Intimacy Back show, where intimacy is real. If you desire to intimately connect with yourself, significant other, children, family, friends, community, and higher power, then this is the show for you. We explore intimate topics, inspiring life stories, spirituality, and insightful tips on strengthening relationships. The show is hosted by Dr. April and her co-host, Coach K. Let's get this episode of the Bringing Intimacy Back show started. We share with you today the secret power to intimacy to create the life you love or love the life you create. Now here is your host, Dr. April and her co-host, Coach K. Welcome to the Bringing Intimacy Back show where intimacy is real. Hey, Coach K, I miss you because I didn't see you last week. Yes, um, you were away. How are you doing now that you're back and you're smiling ear to ear? We missed you. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. I had a great time. I was doing hosting one of my intimacy retreats in Costa Rica. Yes, and it was just such um, in Costa Rica. I host a retreat, intimacy retreat at a peace retreat center, where it's very peaceful, serene. You're away from everything else. And couples can really focus on themselves. And many people go there for self-intimacy, just to focus on themselves, which I've done. And they bring their, um, sometimes bring their partners and stuff. And so I brought my partner this time and I actually got engaged. And right. <laughs> that yeah. is so exciting. Yes, yes, yes. It was just, it was just amazing. Yes, yes. And so I'm so excited to even, talk about this topic of sex, because many people think it starts in the bedroom, but it doesn't. No, <laughs> long before that, that's like the end result, basically. <laughs> yes, definitely. Yeah, yes. And so um, even on the retreat, in the sense, um, sometimes it's like people like, I just don't want to be, you know, when my partner touched me, I'm always thinking it's for sex. And right. many times, that's just not what a man's always thinking, but people just think that, you know? Yeah. And, you know, unfortunately, we bring baggage, we bring what we see on TV, we bring assumptions, everything except our present self is what we bring forward. Right. That's exactly. Excited about today's topic. Exactly. And I'm glad you're talking about that in the sense that we truly have to be present in everything that we do. And that's what makes really good intimacy is being present. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. But like you said, sometimes people have so much trauma and other things that stops that. Absolutely. It's, it's there and you do such a good job of just kind of pressing it back that you just can't figure out what you can't figure out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And as when people press it back and just don't figure things out, Sometimes they press it back to the point where they don't even love themselves, which totally yeah. impacts everything. And so this month of July, um, we're focusing on for the charity of the month is how you love yourself. Because mm. that does impact that full intimacy you have with your partner. That's a good foundation. I've, I've I love that you do these charities of the month. Let me start there because I learned so much of these organizations that are out there. Um, and this one is, I'm all about that. You know, I have a, a women's healing conference coming up in October. So this is like, wow, love it. <laughs> yes, yes. The charity is called Love Yourself Foundation is www.thelyfoundation.org. Um, and it empowers people and brings humanity. And it talks about that self-love and how to undercover how you love yourself. Because in all honesty, you're going to be with you for the rest of your life. Yeah. <laughs> you cannot divorce you. And in loving yourself, when you love yourself, that impacts your partner. Because you can't feel truly love from other people if you don't love yourself. Exactly. You put up your own wall and shield. Right, right. People will treat you the way you treat yourself. So definitely think about that Love Yourself Foundation, a great organization as you love yourself. That, of course, will help 
provide much more intimacy in and outside the bedroom. Yeah. Yes, yes. And so, you know, what I'm really also excited about here is I was just thinking, this is the first time ever that we've had someone from France. Yes. <laughs> we get so many we get so many different accents in so many different countries. So it's awesome to be able to hear a new, a new one. Yes, yes, yes. So we have a French author. And you know, when we think of France, all we think we think that they're ah, oh, they know about love and all this kind of stuff. Yeah, so we have a Pepe Le Pew. Oh, we oui, oui. <laughs> <laughs> So we have a wonderful French author. His name is Guy Blaze, and he is going to talk to us about sex doesn't start in the bedroom. So if you have any comments or questions, please add them into the comments. We'll be right back in a moment to bring on Guy. Are you a business professional? Dr. April Brown's latest book is for you. Whether you are newly hired or managing a team of employees, her 30 intimacy-driven business principles will help you progress towards career success. Learn how to show up as your best self at work, what it means to cultivate a meaningful career, and how to avoid burnout, all while living up to your highest professional potential. Improving Intimacy, the book for business professionals, is available on Amazon in Kindle, Audible, and paperback. Search Dr. April Brown on Amazon to view all her books on improving intimacy for yourself, spouse, spirit, and more. Welcome back to the Bringing Intimacy Show, where intimacy is real. Hi, Guy. Hello. How are you today? Good, good. Welcome to the show. We are Thank so... Thank you very much to, to having, for having me here. Yes. We, so... Hi. Yeah, we feel so honored to have a French <laughs> author here. But yes. thank you. It's an honor for me as well to see you and meet you, Coach K and Dr. Epper. Yes, awesome. So and this show is called Bringing Intimacy Back. And we would love to know what do you, what do the French people, what do you specifically um, define intimacy as? Well, intimacy is uh, the way you, you handle your relationship with your partner. Mm -hmm. um, it's 27, seven days a week, 24 hours a day, 365 a day. Because you don't have to be stick together every time, but there is a form of communication all day long. You can go through text, talking, you can be at your job, lunch time, break time, you check on your partner. That all make intimacy. Hmm. Well, Guy, you're the first one who's, um, and I've asked this question, I don't know, it seems like a thousand times, but you're the first one who said it's basically 24-7. Oh, or it yeah. is 24-7. Yes, it's always. <laughs> I think about it how many times you think about your partner. Mm -hmm. Right. In one day, what is up to maybe sleeping, she's eating lunch, or he's doing this, or, you know. So you have to keep it up. <laughs> yes, definitely. I, I love that. And so for many couples, um, especially when they start to have kids or maybe um, kids are starting to be a little bit grown in some aspect. And they're like, how do we maintain intimacy? How do we do that? How do we keep that? Is that? Well, you know, to be a parent is a job. So you have to be prepared. Right. You know, I respect people who say I don't want children. And I respect those who say I want children. It's up to you. If you don't want children, I will not call you a selfish. It's a choice. Mm -hmm. But child in a relationship bring also the, the problems, the issues that you have to think ahead. Because there are some men who are very needy. They will compete with their own baby, mm -hmm. yeah. you know. So if you're not ready for that, then don't be a dad, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so you you can you can you know can split your wife and the mom at the same time half and half, but you have to sacrifice. We have a same French. Sometimes you have to give away your beer to make your head pass through, you know, something. <laughs> So you want to be a dad, but 
accept it and you have to make some sacrifice that you're going to share your wife now with your child. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a very good point that you made. And I don't think enough people understand, you know, how much a child will change the dynamic because, you know, when it's just you and your partner, you, you're used to just giving each other. Yeah, exactly. Now, now you have three. Now you have three, right. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. And like you said, many people don't realize that. And um, I'm glad you said, hey, if you're feeling that way and you do have a kid, you do have to sacrifice. Yeah. yeah. Accept it or you don't. If you're not ready, don't do it. And because right. it's going to change your life forever, at least until they reach certain age. Mm -hmm. yeah. Definitely. Yes. And so, um, when someone does have children and they are thinking, well, how can I sacrifice? Um, she's doing all this and I feel alone. What What do you say? How do you not get jealous? Well, you know, that's a price to pay. You know, motherhood is a challenge. First time mom, have to figure things out. That's just a reality that if a mom, nobody was born mom, nobody was born dad, you become a mom. You become a dad. You become a, a father. You 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 get a child, and then you. That's why planning is it's very important. Mm -hmm. I always think the what can go wrong, what can be the challenge when we will have a child. Mm -hmm. Okay, baby, wake up in the middle of night. Who's going to wake up to pick up the baby? Right. How we can share parenting in a way that. No one feels frustrated. Right. Because I hear here in America many times, it's a mom's job. Well, mm -hmm. if mom also has a full-time job, then she got two jobs. <laughs> then you become the sperm donor for play your role so that you find an equal or balanced relationship with you. Because resentment will build up yeah. with time mm -hmm. and that breaks the relationship. Mm -hmm. Hold on. Yes. And I, as she's talking, I'm just even imagining that shared responsibility also provides that 24 seven intimacy like you're talking about. Yeah. 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 It's very important. And I think uh, for I'm speaking for for a man, if you're smart, be proactive. Don't be don't wait to be asked if the baby's crying or learn how to change a diaper to give her a break. And that will help you in the long run. Because, I mean, women can hold stuff, but the day they put it on your face, you're like, oh, my God, you know, maybe because she's been building things over the years. Mm -hmm. So just being proactive as a father, as a husband, will save you, your marriage, your relationship. Right, right. Yeah. It does build a great deal of intimacy when you knew that you could, you know, you wake up because you hear the baby crying and you hear your partner get up, that just, it makes you fall even deeper in love with the person you're with. Like but that exactly. intimacy grows. You guys, you say in America, it takes two, two people to fight. So that's, it takes two to make a baby. Mm -hmm. Mom have a tendency to do a little bit more. We respect that. But do, if you got 25%, try to do the maximum of the 25% so that the load does not fall on one, one person. Right. 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 I know when I do um, couples counseling, especially in talking with women, um, emotional intimacy is so important. It's like the juice, you know, like for men, they get excited about um, tits and butts and all that. Yeah. For women, I feel like we get excited if our partner is there mm -hmm. helping meeting our emotional needs and, you know, helping out with chores and um, doing different things. Mm -hmm. I know that you have um, done a survey, you've done some kind of research on women out there. In yeah. the, yes, yes, for your books. Yes, and yeah. uh, most of the things that came out is this um, lack of validation. Oh, validation, yes. Yeah. So like uh, anybody, some of the readers who read me, I always tell them that 
you husband or wife or partners, whatever, treat each other like they were your best customer. Mm. Mm -hmm. yes. Always. Yes. Validation is one of the frustrations that I notice among uh, American women. Mm. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. You're, you're right that some of us, and I talk about it too, that customer service, we're so much nicer to these strangers who we may never see. Exactly. But then their own partner is there, they, they treat them differently. Mm -hmm. Because they're the yeah. customer. So, yeah, treat each other like best customers all the time. Mm -hmm. Very yeah. And I'm lucky to have a, a son and a and daughter, so I can talk for for boys and for guys and for women. So they are future husbands, future wives. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and I know we just finished talking about for women, but for men, where does where do you think intimacy starts at for men? Well, we'll have a something that I notice here. Uh, men focus more on men stuff well in france if you you want to understand women sometimes sit and listen to what the women show read read by curiosity women magazine there may be things that you're doing that frustrate your wife or your partner maybe you can learn something from those shows and that will help your you to manage some of the things that you may know. And we are men, we don't understand women. Mm -hmm. so, but if you have to be a little bit, you know, be a little bit more proactive and understanding. I personally watch French women show. I always something to learn about sex, intimacy. Women get frustrated when, when you leave everything for her to make decisions. Or sometimes be active as a man to plan vacation or you know pick places and or daycare and one of the things that i notice here in america uh, the, the partner the husband will say oh i'm taking you out for dinner but it's the wife to figure out the daycare part <laughs> well, do the whole thing <laughs> exactly but behind the scene, if you truly want to make your life a day special that day, plan the daycare, plan everything as a husband. She has zero to worry about that day. Okay. Yeah, because yeah, then it becomes a chore that it's, you want to take me out, but I have to do the work. Of behind the scene, the you have to plan everything. Call the babysitter, call your mom or your, you know, sister to take care of the baby. No. And that just starts the date off on the wrong foot, which means that the night will probably end possibly on the wrong foot. Exactly. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. I, I, mean, I listen to many American women really open up, maybe just because I'm from, from France, maybe. They tell me things that I'm sometimes, wow, really? Oh. Right. Right. Is it different over in France? Oh, uh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Women in France is more outspoken um they mm. don't hold too much but here um a woman is like a fear of hurting their partner's feelings okay you know they're telling the truth but they suffer in the silence mm. and you know how can they better themselves if you don't tell them they're doing this wrong or you don't like what they do mm -hmm. so yeah yeah here women just don't speak up enough and I wish people would speak more. Right, right. Because when you hold in your truth, or we call it stonewalling or whatever, mm -hmm. it actually, I think, um, adds more weight to you, causes heart, or, you know, heart pains, um, IBS or whatever, stomach issues. Yeah. yeah. Instead of just speaking out your truth. Yeah, that helped the relationship. Um, it's like working with an editor, right? So you right. send a manuscript, they give you a feedback. So if you don't handle the truth, then you will never make a book. It's the same thing with the relationship. If your partner does not tell you how they feel, it's, it's definitely it's going to die. <laughs> the relationship. Right, definitely. Yes, yes. And as you're raising um, daughters, how many daughters do you have? Uh, I have four daughters. <laughs> four daughters, yes. <laughs> yes, yes. How are you um, helping them and helping women in your book 
be able to speak their truth? Well, I try to learn to teach them first as a dad at home, just to show them that you can talk to me about anything. Don't have a faith. Uh, daddy will be judging you. Or, and um, so far, so good. Eh? They, they they read some of my books and they, they laugh about it and some of the French uh, <laughs> expressions. But yeah, I try to, because I'm projecting their, them becoming future wives. Right. You know, and I, I think if my son become a bad husband, I would blame myself. So I correct his language. You know, don't call a woman a B word mm -hmm. as a referring to your rap music or whatever. No, straight. And we have to respect women, no matter yeah. what. Yeah. Definitely. Yes. And so as, as our audience are out there listening and the topic today, of course, is sex does not start in the bedroom. Yes. What um, tips could you give the female in that perspective? Well, responsibility. You are husband and wife. You don't have a children. Watch a movie on a couch. Holding. We call it in French, Calin. You know, playing with your partner's hair on the couch. Mm -hmm. That relaxing. Or massage the foot. That's what the French do. And it's not necessary. You still can have your clothes on. It's okay. Right. C'est la vie. So intimacy is also going out, figure out what you could do, or watch the movie, or come back home and you don't have to necessarily jump in a bed. That's what makes intimacy. No, it's having a meal face to face. Mm -hmm. You know, and well, it's estimated like us. Fifty-five percent of French men can cook. Why not cook for your? Yeah. <laughs> At least learn how to make an omelette. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I love that's that right there is the kicker i love when on a saturday morning or sunday morning if my husband gets up and he just fixes breakfast for me like that's when like he's, everything he's a smart husband because i tell you that he can have anything he wants if you be proactive don't wait to be asked if the, you have to carpet or pass a vacuum or no do it don't be don't, take your wife's car go clean it bring it in the driveway don't wait to be asked. That release all the tension, the load, and feeling loved. That's beautiful. Wow, you, you're just dropping down some words of wisdom on both parts. Yeah, thank you for that. And so I know you've written um, a couple of books. Tell us about your books. So um, the first book, uh, Vive la Différence, a Frenchman Perspective on American uh, Woman was a reaction of how I landed here in America and watching people know interaction, like, oh, these people don't kiss each other. Mm -hmm. uh, you see a husband and wife standing at a school bus with a child. They're like two strangers. And I'm watching from my house, just watching, oh, wow. Why they don't kiss each other? Why they hold, don't hold hand? So I start taking notes. And describing the description, or sometime uh, I'm in a cafeteria in my job, a colleague male talking to me and basically trashing his own wife. Like, is this necessary? You know, if you have differences, you know, keep it in the house. But in France, if you talk bad about your partner, it's embarrassing actually. Mm -hmm. But it's for them, it's like, and low there, you know, where they have to say to your partner. And like, so I wrote those, those book and all those nuances. And then the reaction of that book, Vive la Difference, a Frenchman's Perspective on American Women, is those letters that I got, about 300 or more, about sex, intimacy, uh, uh, threesome, uh, I mean, all the topics. So I took the 60 best letters, and then I make it a book, uh, Love Like the French, where they ask me questions, and I responded in form of letters. Mm. Yeah, uh, 60. And then um, the letter keep coming after Love Like the French. 
Why well, come up with the idea? What can I write a book that can help American men to be better partners? So in that I don't love like a man. Yeah. So that came out in April 2022. Yeah. Oh, yes, I do like that. Yeah. Yeah, like coach, yeah, that's um very inspiring and gives them um some real tips from real women that are saying, you know, this is what's happening. These are the Yeah, understand, try to avoid you know, trouble ahead. Like I say, men have to think like a marathon runner, no, like a sprinter runner. Okay. Well, yeah, you can meet someone, she's pretty, you think you can go and just have to, because a lot of people fall in love based on sex. Right. Yeah. Sex is great, I marry him, but you don't see the other side of them. Right. <laughs> exactly. Or well, when I think about a marathon runner, it's like, okay, can I live with this person? in the mm -hmm. long run, because sex is not forever. It, it, they are up and down. Mm -hmm. At some point, you know, you got your low, you got your high, you got your low. But in the long run, if you really married or you are with somebody based on, you can handle their behavior or their, their attitude. Maybe some people can be moody in the morning, you know, that will last. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I like that you use marathon runner because a sprinter would not be able to do a marathon. Yeah, yeah. Um, sprinter we go at some point, yeah, six so great, bam, 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 after that, boom, you can't keep up. But yeah. marathon runner have a strategy. 20 years from now, they can be still going and they still have a yeah. great relationship because their mindset is for a long run. Their mindset, yeah. Yes. Yeah, well, thank you so much. And so people are out there listening and they want to know where they can contact you or where they can get your books. Please well, they can find me uh, on Amazon uh, or Barnard Nobles. Uh, the spelling is Guy, Guy Blaze. Uh, uh, the book is Love Like the French and Love Like the Man. Um, they can find me on uh, Facebook, uh, Guy Blaze Official. Right. And you definitely have a website called um, thefrenchperspective.com. Exactly. Yeah. That's my website. And that's where people come and leave some comments and talk to me about stuff. All right. Thank you so much, Guy, for being on the show. It's been um, definitely a pleasure. Pleasure for me to meet you, Coach K and Dr. April. It was yes. awesome. It was a great conversation. Yes. Thank <laughs> you. We'll be back in a moment. Improving intimacy, everyday expressions is all about you and your partner. Opportunities for intimacy are scattered endlessly within every second of life you create together with your partner. Everyday expressions will educate you and open your eyes to just how great your relationship could be with a little TLC. Improving intimacy, everyday expressions provides a true baseline for the strength in your relationship you've been looking for. Available in Kindle, Audible, and paperback. Welcome back to the Bringing Intimacy Show, where intimacy is real. You know, that was just so wonderful to hear from a guy um, providing insight into the to men, um, especially American men, on being mm -hmm. proactive. Absolutely, and I believe it's always better, more received from another male. Um, because, you know, if someone's in a relationship and they are already hearing it from their partner, so to get another female is like, ah, oh, you guys are all alike. So to get that perspective, especially for someone from outside of the U.S. So this is a, a 50 foot view of I'm hearing from your women. And these are probably the same messages that you all have been hearing for so long. Let me write this down and give you a perspective on what's what they're actually saying. So this is super, super important because literally, like the topic says, sex doesn't start in the bedroom. Half the time it doesn't even end there, but it definitely doesn't start there. <laughs> right, right. And just on that thing that you were just saying, another on the flip side is that he, you know, talked to all these women and to from a male perspective, he said, Women, we need to talk up more. Yeah. 
But yeah. Yes. We are, we are blessed with two sets of lips and we will open one and have not have a voice with the other. And right. it's just crazy. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. So women, if you're out there listening and he said, hey, you need to speak up. A man is not going to assume your needs, basically. That's right. Mm-hmm. Jeez, that was awesome. Great conversation. Yes. I like what's yeah. coming up. We have more great shows coming up um, in the coming weeks. So on next week, July 13th, we have Living Before Marriage, The Beginning or the End. And me and Dr. Abram will be talking about that. On July the 20th, we have The Remarkable Healing Power of Crises with Suzanne Falter. And then on July the 27th, we have The Soul. What is it good for? With Corey (laughs) Rosinski. You have a beautiful singing voice. Only when it's in joking, not in real life. <laughs> awesome. All right. So if you've been out there listening, please like us or follow us on Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, LinkedIn, Clubhouse. And we will see you guys next week. This has been the Bringing Intimacy Back show where intimacy is real. See you next week, Coach K. All right. Bye, everybody. Thank you for listening to today's episode of Bringing Intimacy Back, where intimacy is real. You can also find us at bringingintimacyback.com, LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. Dr. April Brown's seventh book series, Improving Intimacy, is now on Amazon. We'll see you next Thursday at 3.30 p.m. Don't forget to follow, share, and subscribe.